Thanks, guys. Um, that's a pretty uh, long-winded bio, I think, but uh, I'm glad to be here. Um, it was an early morning for me. I have an 11-month-old baby who's going through molar teething right now and uh, constantly waking up every hour at night, um, which <laughs> basically throws me right into the survive um, theme. Um, what, I, what I found out is that survival sometimes just takes uh, love and compassion and an understanding, not necessarily just wrestling and, and go get kind of attitude. Um, especially with my baby, uh, her waking up, you could just get angry at her because, you know, I got a presentation in the morning, right? Um, or, or you could just ignore it and think it'll go away, but both of those methods absolutely fail. They don't work on babies. Um, so it's all about being there, loving, nurturing, um, rocking her back to sleep and, and hope it's a deep sleep so that you at least get two hours this time around. Um, so that was about six o'clock in the morning. My alarm was set for seven. That's the earliest I've been up in a really, really long time. Typically I start my day at 10.30. So bear with me if I'm a bit stumbly through these slides, all right? Um, Creative Mornings, 12, 12 of these already? That's amazing, it's a real cool accomplishment. So congrats to Stephen and the dedicated team uh, behind it. Um, this quote basically sums up um, everything to do with my experience. But uh, before I get back into it, uh, I wanna just share, also there's no font, hey? I, anyways. Um, <laughs> It's just like rendering to default font, which is crazy. <laughs> but um, <laughs> background info. So Stephen had mentioned I'm from the Netherlands. Um, I'm actually from a very, very small town called Katzheuvel. It's somewhere in the middle of Amsterdam and Brussels. And um, it is uh, basically, I was born on the edge of a, an enchanted forest um, <laughs> in the land of make-believe with stories and experiences that are based on the Grimm Brother fairy tales. And uh, it's a theme park called the Efteling, which I would go and visit every single weekend uh, where there's rides like this, uh, the Flying Dutchman. And I actually took the Flying Dutchman from Holland to here and al voila. Um, then I start growing some roots. Uh, I bounced around a few cities in Canada and settled in Calgary, start Wild Forest in 2013. And uh, we, well, Stephen already mentioned this, but we do commercial work for a bunch of stuff, uh, clients like uh, the National Basketball Association, Citibank, and we're doing some public art for the Calgary Film Center right now. Uh, so very kind of just broad creative spectrum work. Um, I work very decentralized. So I'm kind of like this isolated guy in Calgary working with people in Toronto, San Diego, New York. Um, it's the future. Um, I work with the future. Um, <laughs> that's recently changed though. Um, I moved into an office space and uh, I'm collaborating more with locals, which is fucking awesome. Um, in 2014, I set up camp. Um, most of you know that there's no real money to be made in events. Um, if you're doing an event, you're doing it as a volunteer, striving to build community, to bring together people just like yourselves. And um, sometimes it's very hard to bring guys like you out. Um, often, more often than not, especially with Calgary, you have no idea until the very last minute if people are actually coming out to this thing. Um, months and weeks leading up to the event, you are like, is anybody gonna come out? And then all of a sudden, boom, tickets start flying and RSVPs come in and it's, it's amazing. But uh, uh, it's very, very difficult, okay? It's stressful. 
Um, and with that comes this unspoken assumption um, that the organizing committee that typically goes by um, unnoticed uh, have all these proper streams in, in place for funding and for marketing and for things like loading all this equipment into the space and loading it all back out, catering, yada, 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 all this stuff. But in reality, we don't. Event organizers struggle every single time to make it happen. For every dollar and every tweet, we hustle. It's amazing and it's a lot of work and a lot of dedication, so I commend Steven and his team for doing it for Creative Mornings. I understand how much work it is. Um, that said, it, it's up to you guys to keep these kinds of organizations afloat and keep coming out and supporting it. Um, there's a lot of events that have happened in the past um, and because of this, this um, unspoken assumption that uh, we typically uh, don't have access to funding and whatnot, um, you'll realize that a lot of the events go the way of the dodo bird. Um, yeah. Pitch a tent, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, running wild forest and camp, um, I, I'm, I'm just a guy like going to tell you my little story about how survival works. Um, you come to a new city and see what's there or what's lacking because you've been to these other cities and you've come to uh, get familiar with a certain lifestyle, out, uh, nighttime, all that, what is it, nightlife, um, all that stuff. And you go to different meetups and events and creative spaces and labs and you start meeting people and before you know it, you have a huge network of amazing collaborators to pull from and work with and party with and what have you. Um, then you move to a city like Calgary, which I did in 2013, and I was like in a little bubble of my own. I was like, where the hell is all this stuff that is, isn't happening? Um, so I started to make notes of what meetups there are, what companies there are, and uh, I, I pitched a tent, yeah. Um, at first, I didn't, I have to be honest, I didn't attend any meetups. I did the research, but I didn't attend anything. I didn't want to go put myself out there uh, just getting used to the new city and feeling a little disappointed with the creative landscape. And uh, it's isolating. Like, it's, it's lonely when you don't do that kind of thing. Especially if you work from home. Um, um, but I'll get into that a little later. Um, and you have to just break out of that comfort bubble. And camp, for me, was a way to connect with other creatives. And not only other creators, but friends, people that I've met around the world on speaking circuits and different conferences. Um, I'd never been to a Creative Mornings, but if I had, I would have met people there that I would have jived with and thought, said, hey, you should speak at camp. Uh, you should come to Calgary, see what the city is about. You'll realize it's actually pretty cool, and maybe we can connect uh, with one another. So. Uh, that was kind of the main purpose, and then I also got to meet all the studios and agencies and designers and developers and the whole creative uh, atmosphere and all that comes with it. Um, and it was pretty fulfilling to pull it all together and bring everybody together. Before that, you need to find resources. and. Um, Things like talent and, and venues and collaborators, funding is that big one. Um, sometimes you need to create new opportunities to get funding, which sounds like, what the hell is he talking about? Ask a question after this presentation and I'll explain it to you. Um, but you build a network. You build a network of all these things and you make more notes. So you're constantly making notes of who's doing what in the city, 
what company is doing what, who's hiring, who's not, who's going away to the dodo bird, and who's thriving in a digital hemisphere. Um, so you build the database and have access to all that. For both Wild Forest and Camp, talent was notoriously difficult for me to find. Um, I was used to a certain standard of work delivering for clients in Toronto and Vancouver and in New York, and uh, I just I didn't have what was expected of me locally. Um, that said, things are looking up now. It's been about three years of camp. Creative mornings are happening. Uh, there's more people living outside of the Calgary bubble, seeing what's happening around the world and integrating that into their own uh, lifestyle. So great job to you guys for doing that. Um, who here is interested in events, really, like putting on an event or something like that? One, two people. Wow. All right, there's a few more. Cool. Um, so funding is really, really stressful. It's one of the hardest things to do because you're going up, knocking on doors, asking people for money. It's sweaty work, um, and it's super hard to convince people to put money into something that doesn't have a track record. Um, or even have individuals part with their money knowing, uh, not knowing exactly what you're promising, right? Um, it requires a leap of faith. And it's my least favorite part, but it's necessary. And um, I'm, I'm happy to share some tips on how to get funding. Um, come see me after that, uh, after the presentation though. Uh, the other thing is speakers. So curating camp is one of the most fun things I get to do. Uh, people recommend speakers to me. People email me out of blue and say, I'd love to speak at your event. Um, but it's stressful on a whole other level because you get to say no to friends. You get to say yes to strangers. You have to say no to strangers and cancel them. Um, how much will it cost to put them up in a hotel? How much is it going to cost for the flight? How do we feed them? What do they even eat? Are they vegan? Are they into beef and stuff? Like, this is Calgary. Like, can we give them a juicy steak? Like, that's what the speaker didn't want, we want to do, right? Then we have to figure out how to transport them, uh, compensate them or not, um, make them feel welcome in general, and provide them with an enjoyable experience. So. It's a whole other ball of stress right there. Um, the big part, though, is to make the speakers accessible to the audience, to you guys. And that's one of the biggest mandates that I strive for. Um, yeah, map your trails. I swear to God, this looks so much better in the font that I worked on last <laughs> night. I mean, this is even, even the font, that, anyways. Um, <laughs> Use some of that good old human intelligence and plan ahead of how you're going to trek through the wilderness and get all the resources that you've discovered, how to put it all together. Who do you need first? Who do you meet first? Um, go see the venues, the office spaces, the creative labs, and decide what you want to do with your time. Do you want to put on an event? Or do you want to just collaborate with another event? Or are you just comfortable living on your own, working on your own, in your underwear, with chip crumbs on your underwear, <laughs> showering the one time you got to go meet somebody? Like, we're all very familiar with that, I'm sure. Um, I'm guilty of that, or I, I used to. I shower every day now. <laughs> But it's because of the baby. It like, just drools all over me. So, um, Then uh, find and grow your tribe. So one of the ways to change your environment into one that you enjoy is by starting a meetup group, uh, helping people congregate around an idea or an experience that you value. And then ask yourself, where are the people that want to come out to your event? 
and market to them specifically. Uh, convince schools and agencies that they need to give people time off. And that's a hard sell. You guys are all here. You probably all have jobs. I'm assuming you're not all unemployed. Um, and you have to convince your boss, hey, can I have some time off to you know, come see the Creative Morning? There's this awesome dude speaking. I want to see him. So, uh, I get it. I get it. Uh, uh, with CAMP, though, each year we, uh, we invite local studios or individuals to help create uh, elements for CAMP, such as the uh, event titles, the, uh, the campfire room experience, which is uh, basically a whole room decked out into a CAMP theme with uh, a digital art sculpture in the center of it. Um, we ask people to do interviews and highlight reels, and it's... Uh, our way to expose the creative talent that lives within the province of Alberta to the world. Um, so if you ever want to do any of that, get in touch with me. Um, then there's, uh, there's that little bit of advice. And you've heard it before, but especially with events, there's a lot of pitfalls that you can fall into. Um, shiny objects that just distract you from your goal and sponsors who would rather uh, control entities than contribute uh, your goal to your goal. Um, there's even things like Mother Nature not cooperating, uh, which if, have, who's been out to camp? All right, a few people, that's cool, okay. Um, so speakers cancel, sometimes last minute, um, sometimes they forget a passport and there's a horror story to deal with there. Uh, I'd love to share it with you sometime. Um, sometimes technology fails and you have to work with that or it just like a crazy snowstorm happens in early September and everybody knows that once there's snow on the ground, you're staying home, right? Like you're just like, oddly, I'm not leaving. Um, so if you want to survive, you have to wrestle the bear sometimes. Um, stay agile. Yeah, I, I do that a lot, um, but it's easy when you're a one-guy show. Um, as, as the bigger your corporation or the bigger your event becomes, the more processes change slowly. Um, but allow for surprises and problem solve uh, along the way um, as much as you can. Um, there are... A few people and corporations that, and organizations and institutions that benefit from creating culture, things like Creative Mornings and Camp and the slew of other events that are being put together and typically are not followed through on or um, they do follow through year after year or month after month. Um, but basically, uh, corporations they benefit from a creative culture with cutting edge technology and design talks and inspiration and adventure workshops. Um, they in turn get a more passionate workforce. So you are more trained, you are more interested in what's happening in the global community, um, therefore you will produce better work locally. Um, organizations benefit from their financial support not only as a sponsor, but them buying tickets from your, for your event, as well as um, spreading the word within their internal network. Uh, one simply feeds the other, and we all live in symbiosis. Uh, schools also have uh, access to a portal into the future. Um, students uh, get inspired and in turn they want to excel at what they do because they realize that there's so much more potential with the skills that they're learning rather than graduate and get a job. Um, and of course there's a whole networking aspect like uh, figuring out job prospects and internships and all that good stuff. So we're on our fourth year of doing camp. Um, 
because of the effort involved with organizing camp year after year, I'm always telling myself, I'm not doing this again. There is so much work involved. Um, just leading up to it, I'm just like, a month before, I hate this, it's so much work. And then, you know, the week after the festival, you've decompressed. And it's just like, yay! Um, everybody enjoyed it, or, you know, you get a couple of people that are like, I hated it, there was no food. The Wi-Fi was bad. Well, that, okay, fine. Uh, we're working on that. I don't really have control over that, but um, we'll try to make it better. Um, camp is really just like a baby or, uh, or a marriage. When you start an event, you should consider it as such, because you can't just walk away from it. Um, you put the idea into someone's head and it grows and they want to become a fan and they want to continue to be involved with it. As soon as you drop it, it disappears and you're, you're losing out on building that creative culture. You watch it grow and mature and you watch yourself grow and mature as these things are um, put on year after year. You optimize processes or refine them, figure out what didn't work, and what didn't yield uh, a proper return on the effort. And of course, you keep what works and develop it further and get rid of all the other crap. Um, so the first year was very much like, hey, everybody, I'm going to put on this event. Please get involved in some form or fashion. Um, I will throw your logo on the poster and on the banners and on the website and all this other awesome stuff. Um, just help me put it on. So pretty much everybody you see there was some sort of a trade. Um, you do this, you get this. Um, let's just say that was a lot of work, but it was necessary, especially for the first year, to put on an event with 400 people coming out to it. Um, the second year, I got a little bit more greedy. Um, I approached tons of sponsors and said, you all have to pay. And um, this is when I was saying earlier about how you can sometimes um, lose your soul or lose focus of your North Star. And sponsors typically want to speak, even if it's not really... Um, a presentation that resonates with your audience and you know about it, but they're providing money. <sighs> How do you balance that? Um, basically just say no to all that. It's not the money that matters, it's the experience you guys get out of it. Um, so third year, I have, what is it, five sponsors. Um, so big change in thinking and um, really thinking about bringing it back down to what matters. And um, by the way, every single year, all this stuff just breaks even. It's not a money-making thing. Even if sponsors are involved, this thing is an enormous amount of money to put on. And um, it, it really just breaks even. But uh, this year, I'm integrating something into camp um, that I'm calling the Summit. And it's... Uh, it's basically an intimate roundtable discussion. Who's familiar with Hollywood Reporter? A couple people. Um, so they do these roundtables with uh, musicians or directors and actors and whatnot. Um, we're going to do something like that for the digital creative community with designers and filmmakers and animators, VFX artists, yada, yada, yada. Um, and we'll film it. You don't get to attend it because it needs to be like this moderated, um, no bullshit kind of discussion. And the best way to do that is stripping down the 400 people that are glaring at you, um, waiting for pearls of wisdom. So we'll release that throughout the year. Um, and what we'll do is you'll get the operate the camera. So you can click and drag, see what person you want to see speak, 
talk. Uh, it'll be like a little interactive experience. Anyways, whole other thing. Um, and then I've also been playing around with something called Afterglow, which is a, a place to host some of the content from and around camp. Um, you'll get more on that later. Um, Speakers, pretty important. Here's just a few pictures of them. Um, some of the guys that we've had out to come to camp. Um, I try to do a pretty even split when it comes to male and female ratio. Although this picture uh, or this combination of pictures, you'll see there's a bunch of dudes at the bottom and a couple of women scattered. Um, it's actually something that a friend of mine pushed on me and said, I'm not gonna come speak at your event unless you do a 50-50 split. And that's when I was like, oh, there, that's an issue. Okay, I'll make sure to you know, <laughs> think of that. Um, and then there's the whole thing about minorities being represented. Um, anyways, I won't go into all that stuff. Um, th this is camp. Um, we have two tracks, we have the main stage at the Grand, um, who's been to the Grand, it's a pretty awesome venue, right? Like it's the only one in Calgary that has this like really unique atmosphere, um, which is why I love having camp there. It's, it really shows a global audience what Calgary is and can be. Um, so anyways, we have our main stage and we have uh, the campfire room, which is the middle one there, where there's free beer, which always helps. Um, typically there's some snacks, s'mores, yeah. Um, Robin here has spoken at it. Um, she can tell you all about it later. But uh, it's a pretty cool, cool kind of congregation of creatives. Um, so with that, the creative crowd when I came here wasn't united in any form or fashion that I was aware of. ACAD was doing its own thing, always does. Sage is doing its own thing. They're not communicating well. U of C, U of L, um, Red Deer College, Nate, McEwen University, all these other schools were all doing their own little thing, inviting a speaker to come and present to their students. Never like, you know what? Let's just open each other's doors and have everybody show up and everybody gets to enjoy some of the speakers that come out. So that's kind of where I am and uh, what I try to do. Um, I just wanted to create an environment that I want to be in. Um, funny enough, I have not to this day seen one full presentation from start to finish. Um, even though that was one of the objectives for me to be like, I don't want to travel to Toronto to see a damn conference and see that person speak. I want to see them here. I don't get to. You get to put out fires all day long. So um, <laughs> it's also way more taxing on you to put together an event yourself. It's so much easier to just put $200 into uh, a ticket and uh, show up for it. Like, it doesn't cost you an entire year of planning and organizing and pulling favors and knocking on doors and being like, sponsor me, please. Um, so uh, think of that. But uh, camp is now this really large collaborative project and uh, going into the fourth year, but it's still faced with all the same uh, uphill battles um, year after year after year. It's the same equation. It's the same uh, asks from people. Um, and it's the same stresses. Uh, this year, we're working together with a local artist called Manny Stobo. You guys know her? Yeah. yeah. Couple people. Cool. Um, we're doing, uh, together with Chris, who spoke here at. Uh, Two times ago, that's the thing. Two times ago, he spoke and he was, he's working with Mandy to make this whole uh, experience into a VR, virtual reality experience. Um, so we're taking a traditional painter into the digital sphere and releasing her content as open source so you can play with it after uh, camp is well said and done. Um, 
The theme is color outside the lines. I don't know if that's apparent in this. Um, but yeah, go get some tickets. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.